Hello everyone, I'm Jagdish Kotra, a researcher at AMD Research in Austin, Texas. Today, I'll be presenting my work on improving the utilization of micro-operation caches in x86 processors. This work is done in collaboration with John Kalamatianos, a researcher at AMD Research in Boston. Here is the outline of my talk. I'll start with a brief primer on various sources of micro-operations, uh, mi micro-ops in x86 uh, processors, uh, followed by a brief primer on a prediction window. Uh, later, I would give the significance of micro-operation cache in terms of rent and efficiency to improve performance and reduce the decoder power. Uh, later, I would describe our observations on the fragmentation of micro-op cache and discuss various sources of, such of that fragmentation. To address this fragmentation, we propose two solutions in the paper called CLASP and Compaction. After presenting these two proposed solutions, I would uh, cover briefly the evaluation setup and results and later conclude. This figure shows three main sources of micro-ops in a modern x86 processor. These include instruction cache, micro-operation cache, and loop cache. The instruction cache contains the x86 instructions that are to be decoded by the complex and power-hungry x86 decoder before they're dispatched to the backend. However, the micro-op cache and loop cache contain the previously decoded micro-ops and hence can bypass the x86 decoder. As shown in this figure, uh, the microops decoded by the x86 decoder are accumulated in the accumulated accumulation buffer uh, until a termination condition termination condition is met, and a group of microops uh, are uh, filled into called a microop cache entry are written into the microop cache. Coming uh, to the concept of a prediction window, a prediction window is defined as a set of instructions that are predicted to be executed by the branch predictor. Each prediction window is governed by a start and end address. A prediction window start address can start at the starting of a cache line and has to terminate at the end of a cache line, I cache line to be precise. Uh, however, a prediction window start address can also start anywhere in the middle of a cache line. Uh, this is because the previous branches target address resulted in a start address that starts in the middle of a cache line. Uh, in this example, this prediction window is also terminated by the end of a cache line. However, a prediction window can also be terminated by a prediction by a uh, predicted taken branch even before an end of I cache line uh, constraint is encountered. As a result, to summarize, a prediction window can start anywhere and can end anywhere depending upon uh, the termination conditions, uh, which include uh, instruction boundary termination as well as predicted boundary termination. Now, having looked at uh, the brief introduction of the modern x86 processor front end and the prediction window. Let's take a look at uh, how the micro-op cache uh, plays a significant role in terms of increasing the front end uh, efficiency. This figure shows the improvement in performance and reduction in decoder power as we increase the micro-op cache size. Uh, as you can see here, uh, as the micro-op cache size increases, since more number of micro-ops can be fetched from the micro-op cache, increasing the UOP cache fetch ratio, uh, more number of microops can bypass the decoder and hence can increase the decoder uh, and hence can increase the UOP dispatch bandwidth, thereby increasing the performance. Now, since the more microops fetched from the microop cache can also bypass the decoder, uh, the decoder power is also significantly reduced. More results uh, on increasing the UOP cache uh, dispatch bandwidth, branch misprediction latency, and the UOP cache hit ratio are present in the paper, and you can refer to them for reference. However, our experiment showed that the modern micro-operation caches are severely fragmented. The main reason uh, this is uh, this, the main reason for this fragmentation is that the UOP cache entries that are written to the micro-op cache are variable in length, unlike the instruction and data caches. This variable in length of micro-operation cache entries are due to various termination conditions that are imposed on these micro-operation cache entries. This figure shows that on average, 72% of the UOP cache entries that are written to the microop cache are less than 40 bytes old. Uh, and the UOP cache line being 64 bytes each, you can see that uh, the microop cache is uh, significantly fragmented due to the variable length uh, microop cache entries. Let's look at what are the termination conditions that cause this fragmentation. The first condition is the I cache line boundary condition. So uh, the figure on the left shows the sequence of micro-ops that are uh, terminated by an iCache line boundary condition uh, that are otherwise sequential and do not contain any branches. 
this termination condition uh, results in smaller U of cache entries, thereby causing uh, significant fragmentation of the micro of cache. The second uh, termination condition called the predicted taken branch is similar to that of uh, a termination condition of the prediction window, wherein the micro op that is predicted to be uh, from a taken branch is uh, causing the termination of this micro op cache entry. This results in uh, smaller uh, uh, U of cache entries and hence will also significantly fragment the micro op cache. There are other conditions also that uh, result in uh, shorter micro op cache entries. These termination conditions include maximum number of allowable immediate and displacement values, maximum number of uh, micro or micro coded uh, instructions per U of cache entry. Uh, these conditions also severely fragment uh, the micro op cache. To address uh, the fragmentation caused by these termination conditions, we propose two solutions in this paper. The first solution called CLASP cache line boundary agnostic mapping uh, will address the fragmentation uh, as follows. In the baseline, since an iCache line uh, boundary terminates the micro op cache entries and results in small micro op cache entry, our CLASP will relax this constraint and hence will result in larger micro op cache entries, uh, thereby resulting in larger uh, U of cache entry than the baseline. Such uh, relaxation of the micro op cache entries will cause uh, larger U of cache entries and also will result in improved U of dispatch bandwidth uh, compared to the baseline because the U of cache entries are much larger compared to the baseline. Clearly, CLASP only helps in the cases of sequential codes. However, there are other scenarios that also uh, fragment the micro op cache, as explained before, that includes predicted taken branches. In this figure, uh, we see the we see that over 49% of UOP cache entries that are written to the micro op cache are are uh, fragmented uh, by are terminated by the predicted taken branches, causing uh, severe fragmentation. To address uh, this kind of fragmentation, we propose our second technique called compaction. Uh, as shown in this figure, the compaction allows grouping multiple micro op cache entries into the same UOP cache line thereby increasing the number of uh, micro op cache entries that are uh, resident in a micro op cache line. Thus, uh, the micro op cache uh, compaction will result in higher U of cache hit rate and hence uh, will reduce the fragmentation and will help in scenarios caused, uh, and, will, and will help in scenarios where the fragmentation is caused due to, uh, uh, due to termination of micro op cache entries, uh, like uh, due to termination conditions like predicted taken branches and so on and so forth. However, unlike CLASP, uh, compaction does not increase the UOP cache bandwidth because upon a hit in the UOP cache, uh, only one micro op cache entry is dispatched to the backend uh, in the compaction scheme. However, there are multiple challenges in uh, implementing compaction. The first challenge is how do we decide what different op cache entries needs to be compacted together? Second, is how do we manage the fill latency of micro uh, cache entry into the micro op cache uh, during compaction? So the main challenge here is that uh, how do we uh, how do we have an effective replacement policy that helps manage the fill latency? So do we manage uh, the LRU information per UOP cache entry, or do we manage it per UOP cache line? So uh, per UOP cache entry uh, replacement information uh, will give us more flexibility in reducing the number of evictions from the micro op cache but the main problem with the per u op cache entry replacement information is that we will have to uh, we are not sure that a victim uh, u op cache entry that will be replaced uh, as a victim uh, as the eviction candidate will make enough space for uh, the micro op cache entry that is going to be returned to the micro op cache because we do not uh, we cannot anticipate the size of the micro op cache as it is variable in length Finally, uh, to take better decisions on which micro op cache entries are to be compacted together, we propose three variants that include replacement aware compaction, prediction window aware compaction, and forced prediction window aware compaction. Uh, so the idea of replacement aware compaction is since we cannot afford to maintain uh, LRU information per uh, the per U of cache entry, per compacted U of cache entry, 
we will have one LRU information for the entire line irrespective of the number of UOP cache entries that are compacted in a UOP cache line. So uh, the replacement aware compaction uh, scheme tries to compact temporarily correlated information, temporarily correlated micro UOP cache entries uh, in the same UOP cache line, temporarily closer UOP cache entries in the same UOP cache line. So as you can see here, an entry X that is being filled into uh, the micro UOP cache though can be compacted with entry A or entry B because entry A is accessed more recently than entry B, entry X will be compacted with entry A uh, in our replacement aware compaction. This will increase the uh, temporal proximity of the UOP cache entries and hence uh, common LRU information can uh, reflect uh, the better, uh, can, can better reflect the usage patterns of these UOP cache entries. Before, uh, Introducing our uh, prediction window based compaction techniques, let's look at the relationship between the prediction window and the UOP cache entries. Uh, as we discussed before, uh, a prediction, a, a micro UOP cache entry can be terminated because of uh, other extraneous termination conditions that include maximum allowable uh, immediate and displacement values for UOP cache line and maximum uh, number of micro coded UOP cache entries for UOP cache line. So these conditions are imposed by several backend structures. As shown in this figure, you can see that 35.5% of the prediction windows uh, are uh, contain more than one UOP cache entry. As a result, prediction window can give us a significant hint in terms of temporal correlation between different micro UOP cache entries that are only terminated because of uh, other extraneous termination conditions. Uh, this figure shows our uh, uh, depicts our idea of a prediction window aware compaction. As you can see in this, the prediction window aware uh, agnostic uh, compaction uh, uh, prediction window uh, a micro UOP cache entry from prediction window A is compacted with a micro UOP cache entry from prediction window B, uh, which results in suboptimal uh, micro UOP cache hit rate. In our prediction window aware compaction, two different micro UOP cache entries from the same prediction window, uh, in this case B. Are compacted together and hence will increase uh, the UOP cache hit rate uh, as they correlate uh, uh, more temporarily. However, there are problems with this prediction window over compaction. Uh, the main problem uh, with this uh, include uh, the following. So at time t0, we are trying to uh, write a UOP cache entry into prediction, uh, we are trying to write a prediction a micro UOP cache entry 1 from prediction window, predict, prediction window B into the micro op cache and we found that a micro op, uh, an entry a uh, uh, a line in uh, a line where entry uh, prediction window a micro op cache entry from prediction window a is written to can be compacted and uh, uh, entry uh, entry one from prediction window b is written into that comp into that line however at time t1 uh, we are getting uh, we are we are trying to write a second micro op cache entry from prediction window b also into the micro op cache. Uh, however, uh, because uh, the previous entry does not contain free space, we cannot compact uh, the second entry from prediction window B also into the same uh, UOP cache line. Uh, however, our force prediction window B ensures that the two micro op cache entries are into the same, are written in the same prediction window, and the previous uh, prediction win uh, micro op cache entry from prediction window A is written to an LRU line so that we preserve. Uh, the hits to that entry as well. Now, uh, to give a brief primer on our evaluation setup, we used an in-house RTL correlated uh, simulator. Uh, some of the configuration parameters are uh, seen in the slide, but more can be, uh, for, but for more, you can look at the paper. Uh, we've used uh, different benchmarks from Cloud Suite, Enterprise and Spec CPU 2017 applications to uh, evaluate our approach. And uh, this figure, uh, these figures show our evalu evaluation results. Uh, uh, the first one shows the performance improvement. The second one shows the normalized decoder power. Uh, as you can see here, uh, class plus compaction increases the performance by 5.3 percent, reducing the x86 decoder power by 19.4 percent. Uh, similarly, uh, the UOP cache fetch ratio is improved by 28.8 percent, and UOP cache dispatch bandwidth is increased by 6.3 percent, while the branch misprediction latency is reduced by 5.2 percent. To conclude, UOP cache plays a crucial role in the front-end efficiency in terms of performance and uh, power. And uh, unlike instruction and data caches, micro op cache entries written to UOP caches are variable in length, and uh, that causes severe fragmentation. In this 
work, we propose two solutions, clasp and compaction, that addresses this compaction, that addresses this fragmentation, uh, which results in a performance improvement of 5.3% and reduction in branch misprediction latency by 5.2%. Please check out our paper and attend our talk on October 19th in session 1C at 10.45 a.m. Central. Thank you.